Hey, future local small business owners, welcome back to the Start a Local Small Business podcast, where each episode, I'll be walking you through the process of getting your local small business from concept to open for business. Now, before we jump in of creating a small business of any kind, it is important that you step back and ask yourself a few questions to make sure that this new life choice is the right one for you. Now, depending on your background, you may have little to no experience in business. Even those of you that were part of corporate America may not have had exposure to smaller self-employment type businesses. I fell into this group when I made my leap from 25 years in big box retailers to local small business owner. From thousands of customers a day to only a few was a big adjustment. But the good news is the concepts are both the same. However, the life of a small business owner is very unique and you will want to make sure that you have what it takes. So these 13 questions I'm about to go over should help you decide if a local small business is for you. So if you're ready, let's dive in. First question you want to ask yourself is, do you like people? Yes, it sounds like a silly question, but it is a very important one. Let's face it, some of you don't like working with the public. For most of you, If you do not enjoy working with the public, then stop here. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You should not be a local small business owner. The reality is your new small business will have you dealing with other people constantly. There will be no way you can get around dealing with the public. I have run into people that hate customers. They hate people. They're miserable. When you talk to them about their business, they're just miserable. And the bottom line is they should never, ever, ever be in a people business when they don't like people. Listen, you don't have to love your customers, but at a minimum, you must love to help people solve their problems. It isn't enough to just love what you do. Number two, do you have thick skin? You will need it. People will get upset many times for good reason. And sometimes that's just how they're wired. Your goal is to minimize the yelling or how long they remain upset. A wise person early in my customer service career told me to remember that people are upset with the problem, not with you. The key is, can you keep your focus on resolving their issue so they will remain calm and see that you are trying to help? This is the point where you also will increase your odds of dramatically keeping them as a customer or a client. You will have critics. Some of these critics might even be your family and friends. You will make mistakes and you will get called out on those mistakes. You must remember that business is business and you can't take criticism and feedback personally. You need to be a duck and let it roll off your back. So you must have thick skin. Question number three, do you embrace and believe in great customer service? I cannot stress this one enough on how critical this one will be to the success of your new small business. No matter what, you will be in the service business, whether you provide a service or a product. Let's face it, without customers, you will have no business. Take care of those customers, vendors, employees, and you will have a very profitable business for life. Now, this question is different than the first question. You might not be a people person, but you can still be very customer service driven. I've known many people like this. They just believe strongly in getting and giving great customer service. And if you do, then keep going. Question number four. Are you willing to put in the time to do the research on your business? If you think you can jump in with both feet and not hit the bottom of the pool, you're being naive. You have a lot of homework to do before you even spend one penny on your business. You need to spend some time with your best friend Google and start researching your new business. What are the startup costs? What does your typical customer look like? What are their needs and how can you fill them? How much money can you make doing this? Is the business trending up or is it trending down? Does your community need someone like you even doing this business? These are just a few of the questions you need to be asking yourself. I will also supply a research workbook to help capture your findings. But the important part of this question is you must be willing to do the research. If you're not willing to do the research, you might as well just say you're going to fail now. This is a very important piece. Question number five, how well do you know your trade area? While this is a part of question number four, it's important that you narrow down and know what your ideal trade area is. If you plan on having a mobile business, you will want to know where you plan to focus your attention and resources. Do you want to drive all over? Does it make financial sense to drive 20 miles? How about 50 miles or even 75 miles? Will you be focusing on your town or go outside of the city limits? 
Is there even enough business for you? How many competitors are in your trade area? What do they do right? What do they do wrong? How will you compete against them? If you are a brick and mortar business, you will also need to know what your store's trade area is. Many places can only pull within five miles of their physical location. So you must ask yourself the same questions. Is there enough business within that five mile radius of where you plan to put your store? Question number six, do you have a plan for living expenses while you get your business off the ground? I don't know about you, but I like paying my bills and putting food on the table. I'll assume you do as well. So you need to have a plan and the finances to get your business off the ground. If you think you can be profitable and make enough in six months, you need to double it. I'm telling you why. Never count the money until you see it. If you think you can do it in six months, great. But I'm telling you, you need to have a backup plan because a lot of times it can take longer than what you think. Many small businesses disappear when the owner needs to seek out a regular job to make ends meet. Life catches up and now the dream dies. The best thing to do for many of you is to start out part time. This is probably the smartest idea. Don't just jump ship until you are making it in your small business. You need to be making enough to be able to make that transition smooth so that way you have the funds set aside to get you going as you build your business over the next six months. Question seven, are you a self-starter? Listen, this one can kill you. If you're like most folks, you have a boss and a list of duties every day that you need to accomplish. The problem is many new entrepreneurs do not even realize how accustomed they are to having a routine like this. You take away the routine and it is too easy to get distracted. You start to watch movies, play video games all day, hang out with your friends. Next thing you know, you've never gotten the business going. When you are an entrepreneur, you need to have a plan every single day. You must learn the difference between working in your business and on your business. Most of you will do good at the doing part of the business, but you will rarely work on the business and this will lead to your eventual failure. This is why you need to be a self-starter. You need to know that when you're not working on a job, you need to be working on the business. Yes, that dreaded time management will come into play. If you're not a big fan of calendars and lists, well, you need to at minimum learn how to use time blocking on your calendar for the activities that are important to you because you need to keep yourself busy and productive so you must be a self-starter. Number eight, do you get distracted easily? Listen, I think most entrepreneurs love shiny things. Ooh, look, kitty. Listen, we love ideas. We love coming up with new ways to do stuff. But let's face it, we get distracted way too easily. A great idea pops in our head and we are off to the races. If you know this about yourself, you will need to recognize when you are doing it so that way you can get back on track. Have friends, mentors, etc. Anyone that can help keep you focused. You will want to have a plan every single morning that you will accomplish. This way, when you get distracted, you know to go back to the plan. You can have a focus issue as long as you know how to recognize it and deal with it when you do it so you can do it correctly. Oop, squirrel. <laughs> you get the point. Number nine, do you have enough funds to get your business up and running? Now, this one is different than question number six. Question number six was about your personal finances and having the money. But you also need to have the right finances to be able to for the business to get going. You can't dip in one for the other. That's right. You can't use the family food money to buy supplies that you need. Your kids need to eat. What if you need equipment? Do you need marketing funds? Do you need anything special to get the business going? As part of your research on your new business, you need to make sure that you know what your out-of-pocket costs are going to be for your first six months. This way you can have saved up enough funds to keep your business going in these early stages without touching your personal finances. Very few businesses come out the chute making a profit from day one. Figure out what you need during the planning stages. This way you have enough money to get your business up and running. Question number 10, are you prepared to work a lot of hours, at least initially? Whether you start your new business part-time or full-time, you will work a lot of hours to get the business off the ground. More than likely, you will be a one-person army, and in many of those early days, you will be in charge of marketing, merchandising, operations, physically doing the service, administrative duties, plus even more. I'm telling you, it's a lot. Most new small businesses do not have the funds to hire folks, so you need to be prepared to work your butt off. If you think you can do this in five to six hours a day, you are wrong. However, if you are starting part-time, 
this might work. But keep in mind, you do have that other eight hours at the other job as well. So no matter what, you're not going to get away. You're going to be putting in a lot of hours. Doesn't mean it's going to be like this forever, but you need to know and your family needs to know that you're going to be working quite a bit to get this business going. Number 11, you need to know, will you need to hire employees? Depending upon the type of small business you open, you might need employees. For example, a quick service restaurant, a hair salon, a dentist. If you fall into these types of service businesses, you need to make sure that you do your research on the laws in your area and state for having employees. This is a critical step in the process. Now, I do dive into this a little bit more in the advanced course, and I'm sure we'll have some future podcast episodes on this as well. However, for most of you, do not hire any employees until your new business can support them. You must have a solid business plan on what sales need to be and what your return on your investment will be. Yes, you will need to view your people as investments, not as expenses. But if you're a one person band, that's the way you need to be in the beginning. Don't go hiring people until you know you can support your business and your family. Question number 12, have you created a business plan? So you've been doing your research, you have been saving your money, you know you'll kick ass and you're ready to get going. Slow down, Turbo. We know you want to dive right in. Remember, we talked about this back in question four. Just because you've done your research, it doesn't mean you're quite ready yet. Time for your business plan, or as I like to call it, a success blueprint. Your success blueprint or business plan is where you will map out your game plan for all the areas of your business. Think of it as a roadmap to get you going in the right direction, a place to visit when all those great ideas start to disappear as you get knee deep into the day and day business. A good business plan will be a fantastic reminder of where you are going and how you plan to get there. Plus, you can tweak it as you go, but do not undervalue the importance before you hit the ground running. Check out the blog post over at Start a Local Small Business called Why You Need a Success Blueprint or a Business Plan. Question number 13, how is your business acumen? The final question to ask yourself before you start a new service business or any business of that kind is an important one. It's so important that it really is two questions in one. A business can only survive if it's profitable. All the sales in the world mean nothing if you can't keep any of it. Yes, even if you hate math, you're gonna have to do some. The good news is you get to cheat. You can use a spreadsheet, an online tool, heck, eviling, scribbling on a notepad. Although that is my least recommended way. And since I know how much you hate them, I've even created some spreadsheets to help you out. But listen, you need to be able to learn about profit and loss statements, ledgers, sales plans, and a host of other key terms that you will hear in the business world. But don't worry, we will dive into these areas more in the podcast in the future. So don't forget to subscribe so we can help you improve your business acumen.